Well, I, I will talk about the physiological effects of heavy water. Uh, the first question might arise right away why I'm talking about the heavy water. Now, there are two purposes of my talk. Uh, one purpose is actually to provide you some background, some, uh, some overview, what the deuterium is, how it was discovered, and what is deuterium all about. The second main purpose will be uh, uh, to convince those those persons or skepticals, and there are sometimes skeptical persons who do not believe that the deuterium can have any effect on biological systems. Now, I do not think that those persons are sitting here in this audience, but you believe me, there are a lot of people who say, this is nonsense, you talk about deuterium has any effect on in biology, this is a total nonsense. Now, they start this way and they continue that the, all these deuterium depleted businesses is a total nonsense. Now, what the purpose of my, my talk here to, uh, to present you some, some data, some phenomena which shows that deuterium does have a very important effect in biological systems. These are not my own uh, results of research, but these are actually taken from the literature, as you will see. Now let's start with this. Deuterium was discovered almost 80 years ago uh, by Yuri Brickwed and Murphy in 1932. And uh, later on, a couple of years later, uh, Yuri was awarded uh, uh, with the Nobel Prize for the discovery of deuterium. And as, uh, as you might very well know, that deuterium differs from, uh, from hydrogen only in one thing that it contains, in addition to the proton and electron, it contains also a neutron. So this is a kind of a heavy, a heavy hydrogen, actually. The difference is mainly in the mass of hydrogen. Now, also, we know very well that ordinary water, regular water, or, or tap water, whatever you, you, word you use for this water, contains about 150 ppm deuterium. So in, in, in the natural occurring water also there is a lot of uh, deuterium. And that means actually that one deuterium and, uh, can be compared with 6,000, about 6,700 hydrogen atoms. Uh, the first time when, when the heavy water was produced uh, was in the 1930s, that was done by electrolysis that time. And the electrolysis, this is a method which is also used nowadays for, the prepare, for, for producing uh, deuterium depleted water and also in minor, minor quantities uh, heavy water. Uh, shows this this uh, shows that uh, this process is based on that uh, fact that the hydrogen deuterium ratio in the hydrogen uh, in the, to the hydrogen deuterium ratio in water is about. 3.79. So this is a very effective process producing either hydrogen depleted in water in deuterium or after the electrolysis, if you, have a, if you carry out the electrolysis for a long time, then at the bottom there will be uh, heavy water formed. On the other hand, the hydrogen depleted, hydrogen depleted, uh, depleted in deuterium can be burned to water again and that's one way to produce uh, deuterium depleted hydrogen de uh, deuterium, de sorry, deuterium depleted water. Now that time what happened, uh, 20 uh, cubic decimeter, uh, cubic uh, cu decimeter, 20 liter was used and from that it was only obtained 0.1 cubic centimeter heavy water. So this was in the 1930s and then the, one of the first experiments was carried out that time what happened, they dropped some, some heavy water on the tongue of a, of a mouse. This uh, should be a mouse or a rat or whatsoever. This is a mouse, actually. And uh, it turned out that uh, he, he, he could not uh, observe any effect of heavy water. That was the purpose of the experiment, because he was running out of the supply of heavy water, so no definite conclusion can be drawn whether heavy water has any effect on this animal or not. Now, later on, it turned out uh, that uh, uh, the taste of heavy water is different from that of uh, ordinary water. This could be, could be uh, investigated and, and proved that. But the first experiment was not successful in this respect. Now, nowadays, heavy water is produced in large quantities, several hundred tons per year quantities. 
And this is just an illustration of an, a, a giant industrial plant which produces heavy water. It's in Canada, in Bruce heavy water plant, so in very huge quantities. It's interesting to mention, by the way, that there are, there are some people who, who also question that the heavy water can be produced at all. Now, of course, can be produced in quantities like this. Now, let's go to the heavy water. Uh, heavy water and ordinary water have different physical properties. Some of those differences are shown in this table. What one can we see? First, that the melting point of heavy water, Dito, is higher uh, than ordinary water. The boiling point also is higher. Then the density is higher by 10%. Of course, this is not surprising because the, the deuterium uh, is heavier than the hydrogen, and this 10% uh, is, uh, uh, can be explained by the difference in mass. Uh, viscosity is also higher for heavy water. It's about almost 30%. It's quite a big difference. And the heat of vaporization, which means how much, uh, mo how much energy you have to put to evaporate uh, water, is also higher for heavy water. Now, all these together means, I mean, very clearly, very uh, easily expressed, can be, f can be expressed like that, that the deuterium bond is stronger than hydrogen bond. That, that's because the melting point is higher, boiling point is higher, and so on. That means to break up uh, heavy water is m not so easy than to break off ordinary water. Now then, then of course, this, uh, this uh, right away arouses the question whether can any effect be expected when hydrogen is displaced by deuterium in living organisms by using heavy water. I mean, this question already was, uh, arose actually in 1930s, right after the discovery of heavy water. And since then, hundreds of papers, hundreds of papers were, were devoted to this topic, and I would like to just show some of the examples. Okay. Before doing that, I, that we should discuss first what, what the basis of this, what, whether we can expect this difference and what the basis of this difference is. Now, first of all, the living system consists of, of, a, of a considerable part in, from water, and as we saw this before, this, the properties of ordinary water and heavy water are uh, different from each other. And so one can expect, I mean, if I replace the water in the living system by heavy water, then there must be some effect there. And this is called the solvent isotope effect. Now, there is another type of isotope effect which, uh, which, is, uh, which uh, takes place when you replace uh, hydrogen by deuterium. And that is also was told before that deuterium bond is stronger than hydrogen bond. And there's a lot of uh, uh, deuterium bond, the hydrogen bond, the living system. And if you replace the hydrogen by deuterium, then it means that uh, the deuterium bond is, can be not so easily broken. And the third thing, which is which also very important, that there are different reactions taking place in the living organism. And to break up a CD bond, I mean a CH bond, is uh, about uh, six, ten times faster than to break up a CD bond. And this is called the deuterium isotope effect. So all those underline the fact that there must be some effect of deuterium in, in a living organism. Now, some, some examples, I will show some examples, some remarkable examples, some striking examples of, of the effect of heavy water on the physiological behavior or on a various living organisms. Uh, first of all, it was very carefully, very substantially, very widely investigated what happens when, when different organisms are grown in heavy water. And it, it turned out that the simple organisms like bacteria, algae, yeast, and molds can be adapted, can be fully adapted to grow in detour. So this is very interesting. I mean, if you try to produce algae, to, to grow algae in, in H2 right away, putting there, it will be not possible. But if you increase the deuterium content of water gradually, then it is possible to uh, adapt these organisms. Now, that's also very interesting at this point, when you take out that, uh, when you adapted the uh, algae to heavy water, and you put it back to normal water, the system will die again. So this, 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 you need an adaption in the uh, other uh, direction too. Now, as far as mammals uh, are concerned, they cannot survive, so they cannot um, 